my beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. On the days before Christmas, Broadway dances along to carols that flow from sequined loudspeakers. The kids mash their noses against the plate glass, lick it, and watch. And it's all there. The mechanical clown, the tin man dancing a jig on a tin box, the toy army precisely to scale with the latest equipment mechanized. And eyes are bright with desire and hope. It's the one time in the year when odds are better that dreams will come true. So make a wish on a neon star. And in the short time before Christmas, creatures were stirring at police headquarters. There's the patter of tired feet and the sound of manly giggles as little gifts are hidden in desk drawers or poured into Dixie cups or slipped under the police blotter. And in my office, my strong right arm, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting pretty late, you know. A couple more hours, you can go home and finish decorating your Christmas tree. Indeed, indeed. Getting a lot of nice things this year, you know? Oh, many's the things, Danny. I guess my old cockles should be warmed. Ah, uh, but they're not. Oh, something wrong, you know? What I want most for Christmas, Danny, I'm not going to get. I'm going to get nicks and knacks and an electric shaver and handkerchiefs and socks and ties and a curved K. Woody pipe to smoke my troubles away. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty full Christmas to me, Gino. Ah, humbug. Danny, what I want most is to go out and solve a crime. To meet face to face the sulky sirens, the hardened criminals, and to solve them the way you do. To go out on a case with you, my fondest wish for Christmas. Oh, police headquarters would fall apart without you, Gino. You just stick around here and do your job. Indeed, indeed. I just thought I'd let you know, that's all. Oh, well. I'm going downstairs for some coffee. I'll be back soon. Roger. Oh, face it, Gino. You're stuck on a desk. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, phone, Gino. Sergeant Gino Tataglia speaking. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right away. Danny. Hey, Danny. Yeah, what's the matter, Gino? I haven't gotten my coffee yet. Coffee? At a time like this? Buddy Malpar, the ne'er-do-well millionaire. What? What about him? What about him? He has been slugged. Let's go, Gino. Did you say let? Of course, on a case like this, I'll need you, Gino. Come on. This is his house, Danny. Let's go. It's locked. Yeah. Stand aside, Danny. Huh. We can go in now, Danny. Gino. Yeah? We could have rung the bell. Who's got time? You coming? For here, Gino. Back of the sofa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take a note, Danny. Yes, sir. Buddy Malpar, the unconscious ne'er-do-well millionaire, battered and bludgeoned on the supraoccipital region of the cranium. Hmm? Back of the skull, Danny. Slugged on the supraoccipital by his assailant unknown. From the size of the lump on Buddy Malpar's heretofore refined head, conclude that said lump was administered by a blunt weapon three millimeters by five of the irregular contour and lead pipe consistency. You got that, Danny? Yes, Sergeant. Hold it. I got a P.S. To wit... Luxurious apartment of said ne'er-do-well millionaire, one buddy Malpa, ransacked and left in disarray. P.P.S., the butler of said household will have his work cut out for him. Shall I phone it in now, Sergeant? Don't move. Huh? The drapes just moved. All right. You, behind those drapes. Out. With your hands clasped behind your neck. Out. Out. 
Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Danny, it can't be. It can't be what, Gino? This man, this hider behind drapes. It can't be. Are you? <laughs> it is he. Danny, may I present Mike Shrek, the bald-headed miracle detective from Philadelphia. Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Merry Christmas to you, Mike Shrek. I assume you gentlemen are of the police of the city? I present to you, sir, Lieutenant Danny Clover and myself, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia. Tartaglia, eh? Uh, that, that name has a familiar ring. Oh, perhaps because I was an innocent abroad on the guided in the footsteps of Mike Shrek tour in Philadelphia last summer. I blew myself to it with my vacation money. Uh, it's not for that I remember you, sir. It's for the word that has come to me that you are indeed the brains behind the brains of the New York police force. Oh, come now, Mr. Shrek. You, you mustn't believe all Oh, I could have used you, sir, on my famed widow Chalcedony's case. When having trailed the desperado across the 1.83 miles of the Philadelphia Camden Bridge, I was caught in the seductive toils of... <laughs> the machine gun brain of the man, Danny. The memory for details. To have made a part of him the size of the Philadelphia Camden Bridge. Gentlemen, enough of nostalgia. To work. <clears throat> it was I who phoned this into you. Being now on the trail of Lance Lash, master criminal of them all, I was led to this place. Only to find Buddy Malpaw, the ne'er-do-well millionaire. Ah, oh, but hush. The man is coming around. What happened, man? Tell us what happened. You are... Gently, sir. You are among friends. We're from the police, Mr. Malpaw. Try to tell us what happened. Well, uh, I'll try, fellows. I had arranged such a pleasant evening. A date with Rima Nine. Oh, not the Rima Nine from Bolivia, but the Miss Rima Nine who is staying at the Stacy Arms. Go on, Mr. Melville. Rima was to meet me here at 9.30. However, at precisely at 9, the doorbell rang. I went to open it. There was no one there. No one? No one. A prank, I thought. I, I started back into the apartment. Suddenly, the, the pain, the awful pain screaming through my skull. It, it was no prank, I assure you. No, it... Where is it? Where is it? Where is what, Mr. Malpaw? It's gone. It was here in this case. It's gone. What's gone, Mr. Malpaw? I prized it more than... The jewel scimitar of Genghis Khan. The jewel scimitar of Genghis Khan. The jewel... What's going on here, Sergeant? Read your notes, man. Read your notes. And watch the sergeant as he considers the attitude of the distressed man, the desolation of him, the sergeant's compassion, understanding. The most precious thing of Malpaw's life, the jeweled scimitar of Genghis Khan, was gone now, vanished, lost, strayed, stolen, purloined. The sergeant's gentleness and the knowledge of it caught up with Malpaw, took hold, displaced everything until it was only emptiness, void, vacuum, space, nothing. And finally, the ne'er-do-well millionaire's rejection of it. And turn now, and Sergeant Tataglia nods sagely. Open the door for him. And leave. Going out of the Stacy arms, and the clerk at the desk lifts a corner of his lip and an eyebrow when the sergeant mentions the name of a woman he wants to see. The long ride up on the elevator... Walk down the carpeted corridor. The sprig of Christmas holly above the brass door knocker. At this time, we'll knock, Danny. Hi, fellas. Please come in. You'll forgive the way I look. We're from police, Miss Nine. Yeah, we got some questions to ask you. A piece of finery I picked up at Cote d'Azur. I always wear it at this hour. It's a wishing hour. You may call me Rima. I'm Gino. He's Danny. It's about Buddy Malpaw, Miss Nine. Yes. He was beaten and robbed this evening. You may sit here beside me, if you wish. None of this sultry siren stuff, Miss Nine. Didn't you have a date with Mr. Malpaw this evening? Yes, I did at 9.30. That check, Sergeant. What time did you get to the Malpaw Mansion? At 9.30. I rang the bell and rang it. No one answered. I was so disappointed. With an educational evening like that in sight. Educational? Buddy was going to show me the jewel scimitar of Genghis Khan. The real one, not the replica. Oh? 
There's a replica? At the Museum of Far Eastern Lore, I often go there in my idle moments and browse around the Far Eastern things. And you're a strange one, Rima. Yes. Uh, please go on. That's how I met Buddy at the museum. Fate plays strange tricks, doesn't it, Gino? Yeah. Now, if you'll pardon me, fellows, I must change. Well, go right ahead. We'll just make ourselves... Close. Let's go, Gino. We are sorry, Mr. Zoe, that we have made you open your museum to us at such a late hour. It is always a pleasure, Sergeant, to indulge the whims of the cultured, though they be policemen. Thank you, Mr. Zoe. Uh, not at all. Mm. And here, gentlemen, looming above you is the statue of the fabulous terrorizer, Genghis Khan, clothed in the cap of Tibetan fur, the jeweled gown of brocaded Peking silk, all of it donated to us most generously by... Buddy Malpar, to complete our Far Eastern collection. And the sword in his hands? A replica only, I hear. A replica of the jeweled scimitar of Genghis Khan. And Mr. Malpar's generosity dissolved when it reached Tell the... us about the scimitar, Mr. Zoy. With the deepest of pleasure. Genghis tore it from the wounded hands of Jella Ledin. His arch and bitter enemy, Danny. Mm. Then for centuries it was lost. Three centuries, Danny. Vanished. To reappear again in the Renaissance as an ornament worn about the slim waist of oh, the Lucretia Borgia, Danny. If this scimitar were real, Mr. Zoic, how much would it be worth? Eh, yeah, conservatively. Conservatively. Uh, half a million dollars. Give a little, take a little. Half a million, huh? That's all we need to know. Let's go, Danny. Yeah. And to you, Mr. Zoic, many thanks and merry, merry Christmas. And to you, sir. The faith. Half a million bucks, Danny. No wonder Mr. Malpar, the ne'er-do-well millionaire. Gino, hit the ground, hit the... Danny, Danny, Danny. Oh, oh. Gino, you're... you're... Yeah, yeah. Help me, Danny. I've been... I've been shot. Oh. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. It's so delightful it's become a Christmas tradition with Amos and Andy. Tomorrow night, again, Amos will be heard explaining the meaning of the Christmas spirit to his little daughter, Arbadella. It wouldn't be Yuletide without this special bit Amos and Andy contribute to the season's atmosphere... So be sure to hear it again over most of these same CBS radio stations tomorrow night on Amos and Andy. As the winds move to the place of the year's dying, the Mazdas on Broadway's Translux arrange themselves in merry thoughts. Suitable for Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future... Broadway walks by, glances up, smiles, hurries to buy the last-minute gift for the last-minute friend. Crosby sings the tune that's in your heart. The corner Santa Claus winks, and the golden girl stops you, asks which way to Gimbel's, invites you to come along and show her. The budget term dreams are coming true, kid. So go live a little. Danny, Danny, I've been shot. Oh, no. I must have been dreaming. Yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, I, I was shot. Uh, there you are, Sergeant, as good as new. My thanks, Dr. Sinsky. Uh, may I say something, Gino? Indeed you may. I've been privileged to attend many courageous men. But you... You, Gino... No other way I can say it. I, I stand in humility before you. Ah, oh, Dr. Sinsky. You, you shouldn't say those things. I He's right, think. Gino. Dr. Sinsky's only saying what all of us feel. We've already initiated proceedings for an award for bravery beyond the call of duty. Danny... 
Dr. Sinsky, dear true friends, I know not what to... May I? Uh, go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Sergeant Gino Tataglia speaking. Yes. 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 That was my shriek. Evil has come to him. Get me a squad car. But Gino, Never you mind can... the hole in my head. Danny, a squad car. Move. The door's locked, Gino. One side. After you, Danny. Huh. Mr. Shrek, what happened to you? Landslash. The master criminal of them all? I give the devil his due. You haven't told us what happened, Mr. Shrek. Please, gentlemen, please. You help me up. Oh, of course. Yeah. Now be gentle with him, Danny. Yeah. Uh, over here on the bed. Mm. Now, tell us about it. My friends, I feel I have failed you. Oh, don't talk like that. After all, how many people have come face to face with Lance Lash and lived to tell about it? <laughs> Give the devil his due. Yes. Now, would you mind telling us what happened? I, I came here to my rooms. Sparsely furnished, you'll admit, but the way I like it. No furbelows to distract my attention. I needed to think. I knew I was once again a hot on the trail of Lance Lash. Once again, from the ends of the earth. Listen to the man, Danny. We had met, Lance Lash and I. The last time on the lonely Isle Mauritius, when we battled hand to hand on top of old Farfangen, the volcano. Yeah, I know, but but what happened tonight? As is my one before I retired, I looked under my bed, gentlemen, and there he was, Lance Lash. So you got under two and started a fight with him, yes, huh? Yes, yes, it was nip and tuck under there, but if the devil has... Well, why due, did he come here, Mr. Shrek? He thought I had the jewel scimitar of Genghis Khan. And as you know, gentlemen, I have not. As you... Oh, would you mind, Sergeant? Oh, of course. Yes? 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 How do you like that, Danny? Like what? Rima 9. The sultry siren? Yes, she was picked up on a disorderly conduct charge. And you know what she had with her? No, I don't. A scimitar. And it was smashed to pieces. Let's go, Danny. If I were you, I'd try a poultice, Mr. Shrek. Open it, Danny. Yeah. Well, Rima, what have you to say for yourself? This, you, uh, and this. Oh, uh, Take it easy, Rima. Just relax. Kicking will get you nowhere. A wild cat. You, all of you. That for you. Easy, girl. Easy. That's it. That's a good girl. That's a baby. You have strong arms, Sergeant. Don't take them away. Oh. The boys say they picked you up screaming on a street corner. Why were you doing that, Miss Nine? They tell you about me banging their empty heads together till they rang out the season's greetings. They mentioned it. Now you tell us why you did all that and right before Christmas. You know why. That piece of mail order carving knife masquerading as the jewel scimitar of Genghis Khan. Not the genuine article, huh? Not the genuine article, huh, he says. It was a fake! A dirty, rotten, and so tiny... Don't scream, Angel. We're all nearby. Okay, so it was a fake, Miss Nine. Where'd you get it? What's that got to do? Only this. You rang Buddy Malpo's bell at nine last night. You slugged him, stole the scimitar. Now you're hurt because it's a fake. Charges pile up, huh, Sergeant? Assault, theft? Indeed they do, Rima. Book me for anything you want, lover. Just so you bring in that woman-beating cab driver. Huh? The cab driver. I get in this cab. Tell him to get me to the airport in a hurry. Why should I stay in this lonesome town when what I had in my hands was worth half a million? <laughs> what I had in my hands. Go on. So Cabby tilts his cap to me. I see the union label. I figure he's friendly, trustworthy, loyal. I make chit-chat with him when, wham, bang, he turns onto a side street, grabs me by the throat, wrestles me for the scimitar. He looks at it and breaks it over my head. And you know who he was? Who he really was? Not 
Not... None other. Lance Lash, the master criminal of them all. Lover, imagine poor little me in the clutches of Lance Lash. Oh, there, there. Don't think about it. You can let her go now, Gino. Read your notes, man. Just read your notes. And leave there. Go away. Find a place at police headquarters and close the door to the outside. Think about it, you and Sergeant Tartaglia. Put it down and add it up. It doesn't come out. So Sergeant Tartaglia puts it down and adds it up. And it comes out. Go to a place now, back to the museum. And tell it all to a man you talked to before. I can't believe it. I just cannot believe it. You better believe it, Mr. Zoig, because that's the only way it makes sense. That's right. If the scimitar stolen from Buddy Malpa was a phony, then the one the statue of Genghis Khan is holding is the real one. The ingeniousness of the man Malpa. What better way to keep his treasure safe than to put it before the eyes of the world? We want to see again, Mr. Zoig. Of Zorg. course, of course you do. This way, this way. Ah, this is very gratifying to me, you know, this publicity. People from all walks of life now drop in to catch a peek of the statue of Genghis Khan holding the scimitar. And just ten minutes ago, I had to warn a cab driver to keep hands off. A cab driver? Yes. Interesting fellow, too. Interesting face. We better hurry, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, look. I don't understand. Genghis Khan. He's dressed like a cab driver. He's holding a city guidebook in his hand. The scimitar is gone. It's impossible. Maybe, but it's happened. The cab driver changed clothes. Maybe we can catch him, Danny. Yeah. And maybe that man's sitting on the steps, swine. Let's ask him. Hey. Hey, mister. Hello. Did you see a man come out of here a few minutes ago? Well, I guess I did. I've been sitting here for the last hour. Did you notice anything strange about any of them, the way one of them was dressed? Let me see now. Uh, this man had on a fur cap and a brocaded robe. He was carrying a scimitar. Oh, sure, I saw him. I didn't pay him no mind, though. I just figured he was from California. Let's go, Gino. Danny. Danny, I think I got it. Got what? Get in the car and I'll tell you all about it. Oh, where are we going? To see Mike Schreck, the bald-headed miracle detective from Philadelphia. I think we're at trail's end. <laughs> It's Lieutenant Clover, Mr. Shrek, and Sergeant Tartaglia. I'll be with you in a minute. We're still waiting, Mr. Shrek. Come in. Come in. I was just tidying up. Going someplace, Mr. Shrek? Back to Philadelphia. I'm afraid... Afraid Lance Lash has outwitted me again. Oh, has he now? Yes, but I'll get him. After the holidays. Sit down, Mr. Shrek. Tell us how you're going to get Lance Lash. Well, I'm going to the Congo after the holidays. Oh. And why are you going to do that, Mr. Shrek? Rumor has already drifted up from the veldt of the sudden appearance of the long-lost emerald eye of the goddess Osiris. If I know Lance Lash, that's where he'll be after the holidays. Well, he will, will he? Let me ask you a question, Mr. Shrek. At your service. How long did you say the Philadelphia Camden Bridge was? Uh, 1.83 miles. See? What did I tell you, Danny? Go ahead, Gino. Correct him. The length of the Philadelphia Camden Bridge is 1.81 miles. Did you hear me, Mr. Shrek? I heard you. Mike Shrek would never make an error like that. Oh? Lance Lash, the master criminal of them all, I presume. At your service, gentlemen. Look in the closet, Danny. Right. Uh, it's here, all right. The costume of Genghis Khan. And, of course, you left the disguise of the cab driver at the museum. <laughs> My compliments to you, sir. You came to the house of Buddy Malpa after the scimitar was stolen. You traced it to Rima 9. Disguised as a cab driver, you found her with it making her flight. You discovered it was a fake. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> of course, you know what happened then. I deduced the same thing you did. That the genuine scimitar was at the museum. Where is it now, Mr. Lash? Where is it? Why, it is here! Watch out, Gino. He'll cut you to pieces. I'll take him, Danny. Lance! Don't! Don't! Say, Uncle. Uncle. 
Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Danny. See? I removed this bald-headed toupee, and what do we have? A full head of hair. What a phony you are, Lance Lash. <laughs> Gino. Gino. Come on, Gino, wake up. Come on, come on. Huh? You fell asleep, Gino. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I must have dozed. No calls, huh? Yeah, from... No. No calls. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Gino? Danny. Yeah? I had a dream, Danny. I was a big hero. I went out on a case with you. <laughs> a dream, huh? I want to tell you something, Gino. What? When something happens to you, something real, and then it's over, you know what you have left? Memory. Yeah, Danny. That's right. When a dream's over, and you can remember it, you have the same thing. A memory. That's all anything is, Gino. A memory. Then I got my Christmas wish, huh, Danny? Sure you did. Go on home now. Sure. Merry Christmas, Danny. Merry Christmas, Gino. ring out on Broadway, and the horns blow, and there's laughter. The translux spells out peace on earth, goodwill to men. You read it and believe it, because it's Christmas time, the time for believing in miracles. The crowd pushes you along, and you're part of it. It makes you happy. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent. The lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Lamont Johnson was heard as Mike Schreck, Georgia Ellis as Rima Nine, Howard McNear as Mr. Zoik, and George Neese as Buddy Malpaw. Ships loaded with vital cargoes for our men at the fighting front are swinging at anchor for lack of radio officers. Men with six months merchant ship radio operating experience since 1935 or any kind of FCC license can get an emergency license to ship at once. Write, phone, wire, or go now to American Radio Association, 5 Beekman Street, New York City. Bill Anders speaking. And remember, the comedy treat that can't be beat is Jack Benny time Sunday nights on the CBS radio network. <laughs>